All right. We've had thoughtful. We've had moving. And now there's me. <laughs> so much for that stuff. Wow. We're, we're, we're going to find out about Vinny. We're, we're, we're going to Vinny. Um, and you know, it's really not fair because Jackie's here. Kelly, you got. You know, I wanted to. I, I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to blind you with my brilliance. <laughs> and I will not be doing that today. This is just a little bridge. A little bridge to finish up on. Well, not necessarily finish up, but continue on with Vinny and then go where we're going. And it's just taken us from there to here. So we it's love just. You, we thank have you. Oh, and thank you. I love you. I hold in my hand my publishing contract. <laughs> opening the bills and there it was and it sucks but I'm so happy to have it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So for those of you here for the first time, my debut novel, Don't Jump, chronicles a woman's quest to find her place and purpose among sex, drugs, rock and roll and celebrities. This installment finds Andy, a 30-something rock promoter in New York in the mid-80s, trying to figure out when the hell she'll hear from Vincent, the pizza boy boy toy of the exceedingly famous Pandora Amora, who legendary psychic Yolanda told her one day she would marry, and who she recently dreamt she was kissing and woke up with his aftershave on her skin, his coffee time soda on her lips, and the distinct sense that she had somehow actually kissed him while someone else was close at hand. <laughs> Made increasingly more confusing when after waiting almost a year to have her dream come true or her astral projection or whatever the hell it was, the real thing was not quite what she'd imagined it would be. And she was left humiliated in the midst of finally getting her man, his roommate Frankie, interrupting them in the most embarrassing fashion. This chapter finds Andy a few hours post-traumatic make-out stress. <laughs> I didn't sleep. As soon as it was a reasonable enough hour, I called Mark. Mark dated a lot. He'd know the rules, the expectations, and the hidden meanings. If it were me, I'd wait three days before calling, he said. The day after is far too needy. The second day, still too eager. The third day, perfect. It displays control and interest. If he hasn't called by the fourth day, forget about it. On Monday, knowing Vinny would be at B-Bar, I stayed home, deciding it was better to be missed. Recounting Mark's timetable, I was pretty calm the following day, realizing I had one more day still to go. At 4 p.m., singing with the radio while finishing my makeup, the phone rang. Hello, I said, distracted by my half-made-up lips. Hey. The voice was unfamiliar. Hey. What are you doing, the strange male voice said. Getting ready for work. You? And suddenly something clicked. It was Vincent. It was Tuesday. This means he loves me. <laughs> we talked for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. And as I got more and more comfortable, I started with the, when we go here and when we do this. And I can't remember what the hell I was referring to. I just knew I had gotten ahead of myself and realized it a few moments too late. For most of the conversation, Vincent had been talkative and enthusiastic, but once I started with the plans, <laughs> although still polite, he said little. I hung up thrilled with an underlying sense of dread. I floated around ar work that night, rewriting, rewriting, say that three times fast, recent memory. But then the days turned into weeks without another word. I'd heard he'd gone back to L.A., about a month later, hanging out in the VIP room at IDO, Frankie joined me. I willed myself not to begin the frantic look-see to see if his roommate was there, a search I'd conducted unsuccessfully on a nightly basis for weeks. Hey, Andy, what's up? 
Um, uh, well, I, I've just begun talks with Billy to, to do a night here, Mondays. Suddenly focused behind my left shoulder, he said, Hey, Vin, don't you think that's a fine idea? My heart started racing. I didn't see him, I felt a hand on my shoulder. What's a fine idea, Frankie? Uh, Andy's thinking of doing a night here. Don't you think she'd do great? No doubt, he said more to himself, surveying the room. Good to be back. Oh, when you were away, I said, <laughs> feigning a yawn. I haven't even been home yet, he said, giving me a playful shove. Came straight from the airport. 